Welcome back to Monroe Live. So today we are looking at a 2025 Mini Countryman. Now, the first thing that I wanna say in reviewing this vehicle is that in matters of taste, the customer is always right. This vehicle relies on its design to appeal to a certain customer base more than really relying on what the vehicle actually is. Now, whenever you say Mini, you always think of a very, very small car. But look at this vehicle. It is not really small. Now, it's still on the smaller end compared to most vehicles that we have today, but it is not a small vehicle. Now, of course, the overall profile has that classic Mini Cooper look, but the styling is in all of the trim details. When you're looking at the wheel arches, you see designs buried into the plastics. In many vehicles, this would just be a flat piece of trim, but they've added in styling there. The lower rocker panel, that cladding has its own styling, an alternate color, contrasting color for the rear view mirrors, secondary color for the roof. All of those little details, they've put decorative features into them rather than having it all blend together. Now, some customers prefer more of a sleek styling. They would not want all of those little pieces. But for a customer for this vehicle, this type of styling, those type of little additions add for that customer. And looking across the interior from the doors through the instrument panel, the seats, you can see how those little decorations have been added to many of the components. Now, it's not revolutionary, it's not spectacular, but that type of detail, that type of what I would almost say accessorizing, is what some customers would want. Looking at the door, all right, this is a very, very coarse fabric wrapped upper panel where lots of these would be either a faux a leather type material, soft touch. This went with this fabric. Now, whether or not you like this type of fabric, you can't say that they have not put a lot of different design elements within the fabric itself. I can say, however, that I would not want to try and clean it, wiping dust out of this fabric, uh, dirty arms sitting up on the window edge over a long period of time. I would not want to have to clean this. Going down the door, now it's a very small insert area here, but this is actually a soft wrap, but I think it's wrapped directly to the plastic. So it actually has a very, very rough sound and feel. Um, carries over to this portion of the armrest. I do believe this is a cast skin on top of the armrest, transitioning to just an injection molding and then injection molding below. So, of course they have their style, but they have a wrapped upper, a wrapped mid, a cast skin, which is a type of wrapping for the armrest. It has all of the elements of many vehicles that we see in the $50,000, $60,000 range, but they've done it very, very differently for this unique styling. Truthfully, I really do like the seats. I like the color, I like the pattern. The seats themselves are fairly comfortable. What I don't like is their height from the floor. Even though it's overall proportion, it's not a very small vehicle. Since it is an electric vehicle, the battery is underneath the floor. In order to do that, they had to raise the floor height. If you look at the sill on the outside edge to the floorboards, there's really not much of a depth um, that you're receiving in those footwells. So for me, though the seat itself is comfortable, my height to the floor is not. Um, this is not a vehicle that I would want to drive in for a long period of time. Having to raise my legs up so high and hold them in that position would get very, very uncomfortable. I like the fabric on the instrument panel because it's not really a directional material. Yes, there is a pattern weave and we would want to go in one direction or the other, but I could cut a series of these next to each other. I do have a problem when we look at the doors. Because of that highly decorative weave on the doors, you could only cut that material in one area of the roll, which means that anything outside that area is automatically scrap. I have to throw it away. I cannot position, I cannot nest. If that roll happens to be 54 inches wide, which is what most rolls would come in, well now everything past that I have to throw away. I can't shift, move, uh, to try and get more utilization. Now the vent controls. 
we've been seeing more and more where we're trying to hide vents. We really don't want to accentuate them. These are not hidden at all. They're right out in your face. Now, I have criticized these controls in the past. Now, this is my criticism. If you look at that knob, what does it look like? It looks like some sort of a tool, like the handle of a socket wrench. You see the knurling, it looks round, it looks metallic. When you see that, your mind automatically gives you an impression of what that should feel like, how it should feel in your hand, how you should use it. But the actual component is very weak, very, very cheap feeling. So you get that disconnect between what your mind is expecting and what the actual part is. So for me, although the styling can look nice, if this is not actually machined out of a piece of metal, I don't like it. It's, it's not something that I would want to be in my car just because I don't want that expectation of this being some durable component. And it's really sticking out of the IP in multiple positions, uh, hitting that and possibly breaking it. I would have a fear of that. The round center display. Now I'm not actually going to open that up and go into any of the controls. I'll let that, um, I'll leave that for other people to review. But the round display itself, the manufacturing process. Now a round display is unique, which means you're going to need unique tooling. You're probably not going to have much commonality between these and other markets, other vehicles. This is going to be an expensive display that would be unique just to this vehicle. These materials are actually produced in sheets, which means when I cut that round display, I have a certain amount of waste that's automatically going to be thrown away. So even though I'm paying for a round screen, no, sorry. Even though I am receiving a round screen, I'm more than likely paying for a rectangular one, but I do not get the benefit of being able to use the space outside of it. Going back to the seats for a minute, Again, the seat itself for me is comfortable. The position of the floor is not, but I do want to make mention of the headrest. This vehicle has fixed headrests. Now, every Tesla has a fixed headrest, but as I've shown in the past, even though the headrest is fixed, internally in the structure, it has all the exact same components of an adjustable headrest. So they're putting the money into an adjustable feature, but not giving you the benefit of having an adjustable feature. I like the idea of making the decision to have a fixed headrest and then we can design the structure and simplify the structure to be a fixed headrest structure. Unfortunately, I do not get to tear this vehicle apart. I would really like to tear this seat apart and understand what is the construction inside of the seat frame to allow for this fixed headrest and what are the effects on the sewn seat cover? Because you can see that the headrest is not a separate sewn cover, which they are on Tesla. It is sewn directly into the seat back. So that is one sewn cover being managed across the entire seat back. There is a center console. Now looking at the construction of the center console, I have my wireless charging tray, which has a fabric edge mimicking the fabric that we see on the doors and the IP. Cup holders, okay, side-by-side -side cup holders. Um, now normally a Mini Cooper would be very, very small. You would have the cup holders front to back if it had a center console at all. But since this is a bigger vehicle, you have the space for a side-by-side -side cup holder. I question this storage bin. Now this storage bin, if you really look at it from the side view, I think it is one storage, but two, it is mostly a design feature. It looks like a secondary bin that has been placed in this console. However, this is a non-movable, non-adjustable bin. All of the plastic, the plastic outer, the plastic inner had to be um, molded and then set into another molding. You could have included in this side panel going all the way up to this fabric edge and eliminated this entire secondary component. But they've decided to put the money into the separate tooling and the extra construction to give this floating bin feature, even though it does not move, it has no um, other sliding function or adjustment. Uh, it is just extra money to have a decorative feature. Now, though this does not move looking at the center console armrest, this is a sliding console armrest. Now, the one thing that was super shocking to me was I don't feel a lock anywhere in here. So it is just by my hand pressure. I'm not releasing anything. I can just slide it forward and back. I do kind of like that. Now, looking at the seat back panel, they've continued that blue... Um, 
artificial leather around. Again, I do like that. The plastic, I question. I, I really don't like these plastic panels. However, it makes it a whole lot easier for trimming out. I can pull the cover around and have some sort of attachment features for all the way around this perimeter. The panel closes that out. Um, it would be nice if the panel matched the seat. Um, however, for cost savings, more than likely, they'll just have black for however many colors of interior they have, and that would be all the same. So notice the door colors. We have the blue fabric of the instrument panel coming to the blue fabric on the top of the front door, transitioning to a brown, and then a full brown rear door. Um, again, just taking a style, running it through the vehicle, having the transmit transition taking up within that driver front door. But think about the rolls of material that they have to have on the shelf. I have to have a roll of all brown fabric. I have to have a roll of transition fabric. I have to have a roll of all blue fabric. I cannot share the utilization between any of these three parts. I can only make that part from the transition fabric. I can only make that part from the blue. I can only make this part from the brown. I'm going to have an independent amount of waste from each of these patterns, which is going to be fixed through production. So for the rear cargo, there's not too much that I would like to make mention of here, but there are a couple of things. The position of the striker latch here. I am assuming that they have made a very thin cargo door, which is why the striker, you'll see it's kind of cantilevered. It's bolted into the door frame and I come out into the D hook. Lots of times these would loop just straight down, but this is giving me some sort of an extension so that I can reach that point. What that's most likely doing is it's allowing me to have a thinner door section rather than having a door that comes down to here in order for this to come straight out. I like that thinning it up. Uh, that shouldn't cause any extra cost in the vehicle. So I like that feature. This feature, however, I somewhat question. So this is just a, a sunshade for the rear cargo, but you'll notice that there is a hinge position in this sunshade. Many vehicles, this is just one solid panel that would hinge at the back edge. I'm trying to figure out what is my benefit? What am I getting by this not hinging on the back? There's an extra cost in the mechanism for having this hinge in the middle. Uh, if this went all the way to the back in a straight line, honestly, this is giving you less access by that hinging in the middle, not more. Um, I was trying to figure out the angles of like, well, maybe the door opens so tall that if it was one piece, it would hit, but really it wouldn't. I, I don't see the reason for adding in the extra cost or having it pivot in the middle. It makes for an impressive styling and in all honesty, the engineer who designed that uh, feature would probably get a pat on the back and add a boy. Oh, this is very, very neat. But my question is why? Even though you can design something that has a cool little trick to it, is it needed? Uh, does it matter? Are we just throwing money at something for a feature that should not actually be there? That's just my own personal question. Now for the load floor, that pivot does make sense. I just want to get to that area, but I still have all of my luggage sitting on the back. I can slide it back and get to that spot. But for a sunshade, I'm never putting anything up on top of there. I don't need that to be fixed. So my own personal pet peeve and opinion. It's hard to really pick your style. It's hard to choose what you want, specifically if you're gonna buy a vehicle and you're gonna keep it for five years, you're gonna keep it for 10 years, maybe even more. Uh, it's something that you're gonna have to live with. Even with renovating a house, I always say to people when they're trying to pick out their materials, the styling that they want, try and pick something that would have been nice in at least four or five decades. Choose through history of a design, a style that would have been nice then and is also nice today. Now, the Mini, of course, has been famous for many decades. So the overall form fits that. The individual details, that is something that I would kind of question. But again, that would be to the purchaser. So thank you for watching Monroe Live and kind of seeing things from the way I would view them. Again, 
I'm not always right. I'm probably very, very often wrong. But these are just the things that I look at and things that I want to question. Specifically, when we're designing a vehicle and we're saying, where are we gonna put our money? Now, the good thing is this arch, that styling costs no extra money. So if a designer said, I want something, and I'm saying, well, how much do we want to pay for it? I want something for free. I can give you that for free. But is this a style that would be appealing to many, many people? Maybe not. So thank you for watching Monroe Live. And I hope you enjoyed this little look at the Mini Countryman. We do have other people who are reviewing other features within this vehicle. So if you're not subscribed, please do so that you can see those future videos.